So in this session on uh, chemical mechanical polishing, we are going to continue looking at uh, how uh, CMP process is done. Uh, we'll look at the tool configuration to start with. And then uh, we'll also look at the critical uh, issues that one may face, face and then how we are going to address those issues and how to you know, overcome those issues is what we are going to um, discuss in this uh, lecture. So let's look at uh, the tool types and tool configuration. Right? So in the last lecture uh, on CMP, uh, we discussed about uh, you know the the four uh, essential elements, and among the uh, the four elements, the two are uh, the ones that are mechanically uh, important. Uh, one is the pad, right? So there is pad. Uh, this is top-down image, right? And then we had wafer. So this is the wafer holder. So these two becomes a, a very important factor, right? In addition to the conditioner that you have and also slurry uh, dispense. So uh, the important uh, uh, you know, mechanism here is uh, uh, abrasive action between the pad and the wafer. Right? So you want pad and wafer to be in constant motion. And the motion can be of different kind right? because you have two elements and uh, you can make both of them rotate or one of them rotate and also the way they rotate. So based on this, there are different tool configurations. So here I listed four uh, possible configurations, but there could be many based on application and tool uh, uh, configuration, but these are all some of the generic uh, configurations one can think of, right? So the first thing is rotary, right? So where your pad is rotating, right? And also your wafer is rotating. So both of the, 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 the elements are rotating in this case, right? And they are rotating uh, uh, with, with respect to their central axis, right? And next thing is orbital, right? where the wafer is rotating uh, while your table is taking an orbital path here, right? So instead of rotation, uh, you will also have orbital rotation of your uh, uh, your table or in this case the pad. So this is also referred to as table. Right? So either you have rotating uh, configuration or orbital um, uh, uh, rotation. So this is how uh, you can uh, get orbital type of uh, uh, action. And the next thing is linear. right? So linear is uh, pretty straightforward where uh, both uh, your wafer and your table are uh, rotating in a linear fashion, right? So they are not rotating. Um, they might be moving in linear fashion, right? So uh, either they are uh, orthogonal to each other or they are moving in opposite direction. For instance, if I take a cross section, your action can be uh, this way, right? Your pad can be moving uh, left and right. And then you have your wafer, which is also moving left and right, right? But they are all always moving in opposite direction. When this uh, pad moves to the left, your wafer is going to move right. And this is how you will get, you know, uh, friction generated. Uh, if not, uh, you are going to move in the same direction and the force that you are going to apply is going to be minimal. So this is just a linear motion, right? And then there is a fixed plate uh, geometry. So in this case, the pad is stationary. So there is no motion of pad. So when you make uh, a pad stationary, right? all you do is your wafer is the only one that is moving. And in this case, uh, the wafer can do um, orbital motion here. right? So it, was, it is going to move along uh, 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 an axis here. right? while your uh, pad is stationary, right? So this is how uh, you can implement a rotary or orbital or linear or fixed uh, plate configuration. Uh, it's, it's up to uh, you know, the tool manufacturer to find what is the best uh, way of uh, removing uh, the material, right? Or optimal way, let's say. So you want to apply maximum pressure. At the same time, you don't want to spend a lot of energy uh, in um, you know rotating these uh, objects right and also you want to get 
uniformity right the best uniformity just to give you an example if uh, if you just have this linear motion right so uh, i have the wafer here and then let's say uh, we have the the plate uh, in this direction so you you are going to have just linear motion right so left right left right let's say there is a linear motion in this case right and if that is the case then you are going to have a non uniformity that is going to form a profile like this right because you you only have movement in only one direction right so what you could do is you can also have movement in the other direction right and that again will give you a non uniformity which is orthogonal to this so you will have some sort of gaussian like right but then when you start rotating and then you are also starting to move the wafer left and right right in this case you are going to distribute the non uniformity so in the uh, uh, what you call systematic non uniformity so if you can do that then uh, that is the best form of getting best uniformity because you are not relying on a unidirectional approach right you are distributing the force across uh, uh, the wafer uh, location not just at the center or at the edge so all these things uh, becomes very important when you choose uh, for a system uh, that should give best or uh, you know highly uh, uniform uh, flatness so how do we achieve flatness right this is very important it's not just about uh, you know uh, getting the wafer into contact with uh, with the pad but also about the pressure that you apply right your pr pressure should be uniform across the wafer so if you take a you know very small sample let's say 1 inch or by 1 inch sample then you can reasonably uh, get a uniform uh, force distribution but then we are talking about very large wafers right so if you go to 4 inch 6 inch 8 inch 12 inch so you, the wafers becomes larger and larger and your uh, uh, spindle size right your wafer holder is also getting larger and larger but though you have larger wafer uh, you are going to apply you know your pressure starting from the middle right your spindle spindle is going to give the pressure to this uh, wafer but then you want it to be equally distributed across the uh, the wafer so recent days uh, the head uh, you know uh, the polishing head technology has you know improved a lot uh, where we can change the pressure locally right so you can uh, uh, apply different pressure uh, positions for instance in this case the central uh, location as a different um, pressure valve than the outer um, uh, ring right or the outer edge so by applying various uh, uh, air pressures you are going to control your uh, uh, flatness or your uh, uh, pressure that you uh, apply between your wafer and the pad and this is how uh, wafer flatness is achieved uh, by controlling the pressure locally right if you don't control it locally uh, uh, you will have variation that we discussed in the earlier slide so you 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 will have a, a very uh, simple membrane and then you have a, a wafer here uh, which is holding right um, uh, by this uh, restraining rings so the pressure it from the center right you apply a, a force downwards and then when you do this um, you are going to have a differential uh, a force right the force at the center is always going to be high compared to edges right so, so because of that your pressure or the force profile is going to be like this and then you will always remove more material from the center compared to the edge right so this is how you get uh, a distributed pressure but at the same time there is something very important we should also notice uh, what is the uh, velocity difference that you get right so if i take a, a circular geometry and then if i am rotating uh, about its axis the velocity at the edge is going to be much higher compared to the velocity at the center so at the center it is stationary so we saw in the preston uh, equation that uh, your removal rate depends on 
your velocity, directly proportional to velocity. So that means you apply large pressure at the center, but your removal rate is going to be very small there, right? And at the edges, your pressure is low, right? But your velocity is very high and you do expect higher uh, removal rate. But then whether these two will compensate each other or not is the question, right? So that depends on the topography that we have or the pressure differential that we have. So in order to control that, we, one need to control the pressure locally. So from the center till the edge and that is where this advanced chucks um, or, you know, um, polishing head uh, holders comes into picture where we create a chamber, uh, different chambers and that could uh, help us in achieving uh, a better uh, uniformity. And uh, the, now we will look at uh, the pad part now. So we looked at uh, the wafer head. So now we will look at the pad. So there are different type of pads one can get. So pad is nothing but you know uh, 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 a soft polymer material or a, or, or a material uh, on which you can put the abrasive on, right? So the, there is type one that is uh, nothing but you know polymer um, uh, type material uh, which could have uh, felts that are you know. Uh, uh, that can help you in transporting uh, the abrasives and the ne next thing is uh, uh, porous uh, type uh, leather material right so that can help you to transport this abrasive material and another one is uh, just a simple filled polymer sheets or unfilled textured polymer sheets right so all these materials have some sort of texture uh, texturing on the surface right this Texturing is the one that is uh, helping you to transport the abrasive uh, slurry uh, that is uh, uh, that you are dispensing and also uh, help you in removing the products right as a result of abrasive action between the slurry and the wafer surface right. So all you need is a surface and then you need some elements on the surface that could help you in transporting and this is what we call asparatites right so these uh, uh, you know corrugations that you have right this is soft corrugation that you have are going to help you in transporting this slurry right um, and uh, also help you in applying this pressure onto the the wafer surface right and the next thing is uh, conditioning diamond right this is the third element that we uh, that we saw as in one of the important component in the CMP system uh, in addition to pads and uh, wafer head is conditioner, right. So uh, the surface, right, uh, uh, of the pad uh, will get smoothened after a while. The reason for that is your abrasives are going to come and deposit, right. Initially you have a very rough surface and then uh, you have this um, uh, slurry uh, making the, the surface smooth and also your uh, removed edge products, right, that is also come and deposit onto the pad, right. And because of that deposition, you will have a, a smooth, smoothened surface, right. So the change in the surface, right, aspiratides that we called, right, and any change in, in that those corrugations, right. So you start with some corrugation and then you start filling up, you, you start getting these deposits, right. And when you start getting these deposits over time, your effective height, your effective height of your uh, corrugations are going to be affected. The smaller the, uh, the height, uh, the less efficient uh, you are in transporting the slurry and also the product. And in order to um, uh, make these uh, pads uh, regenerate, you uh, use uh, these conditioners. So these conditioners are nothing but, you know, um, having very abrasive diamond tips and then they will take these uh, products out, right? They will uh, remove this product out and then when you remove it, then it becomes uh, abrasive again, right? So this SEM picture shows um, on the left side, so shows the one um, that is uh, collecting all these uh, slurry and then becoming smooth. So you can see here the number of holes are less and these holes are filled, you see. So the filling of these holes are there, but then when you uh, go through the, uh, the polishing or the conditioning process, you see all these uh, holes open up, right? And this is how uh, 
you increase um, your abrasive nature and that is shown in this polishing time right so as the polishing time increases your removal rate decreases right that's because the abrasive nature of the pad is getting reduced right and then once you introduce the polishing step right your removal rate improves right because you are making this uh, texturing uh, much more um, uh, the texturing height higher so that your transport of slurry becomes effective right the pad is not smooth anymore right you can think about your uh, uh, the sandpaper example here as well right so when you are polishing or when you are removing uh, any rust from the tube right uh, 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 iron uh, pipe so you once you start uh, you know sanding uh, you will start accumulating this um, uh, uh, the products from the rust but then you won't be able to remove anymore so what you do is you tap your uh, sandpaper a uh, few times to remove all those deposits right and then now you have the sand uh, ready for uh, uh, abrasive action again which will be efficient right so this is the action of uh, making the abrasive pad um, to uh, come to the condition through which we can uh, increase the removal rate all right and the next important thing is the slurry right so slurry uh, is the main uh, ingredient uh, that enables the abrasive action so what is the constituent of this slurry the so slurry can consist of abrasive particles in a solution as simple as that right so i have some particles and i have this particle in some solution and then I dispense this solution on the pad so that these particles could go and uh, do uh, abrasive action on the uh, wafer. So this abrasive particle uh, has different characters right uh, size and what is the type of um, this uh, particle and also concentration right. So whether you have large number of particles or very small number of particles in a given volume, right? The concentration is important. The, the size of the particle can range from 10 nanometer to 300 nanometer. So this depends on uh, uh, the type of uh, uh, polishing you are trying to do. Uh, your final smoothness strongly depends on your the abrasive particle size okay and these particles can be primarily we use dielectrics like right? silicon dioxide or silica particles or alumina particles because these particles they have uh, very uh, uh, high uh, yield strength right so you can apply very large uh, forces yet these particles will not uh, disintegrate and uh, there are other particles like cesium oxide titanium titanium dioxide magnesium oxide and zirconia so these are all other type of particles one can use for specialized purpose all right and uh, the hardness of the particle is something that one should be very careful about right so though we say these particles should withstand large pressure but you don't want them to be too hard uh, that could result in surface damage right they should not create scratches the whole idea is to polish we don't want these uh, particles to uh, you know make the surface rough so that is something that uh, one should be careful about while choosing the right um, uh, abrasive particle and the concentration you know varies right it can be from one percentage to 30 percentage the concentration uh, helps you in uh, uh, in the material removal rate right so when you have a, a higher concentration your removal rate is very high because you have more number of uh, particles available for uh, uh, abrasive action but at the same time if you want to have a smoothening process if you want to have a very low removal rate right if you don't want uh, uh, po uh, uh, topography uh, uh, change you just want to have polished to make it smooth then your concentration can be much lower where your removal rates can be lower uh, so that you avoid material loss so the solution right that's all about the particle and what is the solution that we can use to dispense these particles this strongly depends on your particle nature right so what is the type of particle we are going to use and the zeta potential between uh, this right and the particle and your uh, 
solution and this strongly dictates uh, the solution choice and we are one need to be also aware of the pH right so that is the main thing and uh, also whether uh, the, the solution has a uh, wettability nature uh, with respect to the pad or not right you do not want um, you know hydrophobic uh, uh, nature of the solution to the pad so that means you are not going to dispense the particle in a uniform way so you could have accumulation of this particle so uh, one need to be careful about choosing the right uh, pH uh, for uh, the solution and also it should be uh, in concurrence with uh, the the type of particle that we are going to use you don't want uh, uh, accumulation um, of uh, these particles within the the solution you want good distribution of uh, particles you don't want any aggregates right so uh, one need to uh, apply uh, some thought into uh, the solution selection uh, after choosing the abrasive uh, particle so, there are two reasons we use uh, CMP. One is to make the surface flat and this uh, cross section SEM shows uh, you know how uh, one can use uh, this to remove the topography. The left hand image shows after a conformal deposition where you can see the topography is still there but then after polishing you see a very flat surface. And then if you want to uh, uh, you know expose uh, whatever you have underneath you can just keep on doing uh, uh, your uh, polishing process and then you can reach silicon here. In this process the, uh, uh, the CMP was stopped right after getting a flat surface and the other reason we use um, CMP is to make surface smooth right. So, we can take uh, as deposited um, oxide layer in this case which has 0.7 nanometer um, RMS roughness right and then after polishing you can get 0.12 nanometer. So, making the surface smoother is also an important application of a CMP process. And in the next few slides we are going to look at uh, the issues related to CMP. The first uh, issue we already saw earlier about sc scratch right. So, one should be very careful about the choice of particle size and also uh, the pad uh, 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 nature so that you do not create scratches right. So, you need a very soft uh, surface in order to get smooth surface so you should be careful about that. The next thing is pattern density dependent flatness right. So, this is uh, this is very typical of uh, a CMP process which is density dependent right. So, you have a large uh, 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 thickness variation after polishing this comes as an intermediate stage right in your CMP process what we call uh, local uh, planarization right. In this process you have a, a uniform polish at the both the side but the only problem is you do have a non-uniform uh, uh, part in between the two uniform layers right. So, uh, this is what we call planarization length and this strongly depends on pattern density. So, when you are doing CMP make sure your pattern density is uniform right. If you have an isolated line and then a very high dense pattern you, you, you cannot expect both the regions to uh, be become flat right uh, without losing material from one side or the other side. So, the isolated line should have dummy structures right. Uh, this is very typical in CMOS process where we use dummies which we will see in uh, a design for manufacturability right. What is the reason for using this dummy and this is exactly one of the reasons why we add additional features to match out uh, the pattern density all right. And the next uh, thing is dishing and erosion. So, these are all two uh, different uh, you know issues that you may face uh, while doing uh, CMP. One is dishing. Dishing is nothing but um, prolonged edge beyond necessary right. So, ideally you want to have you know a flat surface finish right. But then if you do not stop it and then keep on um, polishing the layers you will have dishing here right while 
the other part uh, is an edge right uh, this is a, a shallow trench isolation sti process in in cmos where you are creating isolated trench by using uh, silicon nitride so when you are doing polishing your soft material will etch quicker compared to harder material like nitride right in this case instead of having a flat layer here right you are going to remove material uh, much quicker here compared to the harder material which will not be removed at all let's say right and this is what we call dishing so don't uh, polish beyond required limit right so if you do that you create this local dishing which uh, can be a real issue the next thing is erosion so erosion typically happens uh, when you have density variation right so uh, the density variation would result in uh, a material that is aggressively removed here right and sparsely removed here in this case let's say this is a, a contact cmp this is a tungsten plugs in the oxide um, uh, um, background right so tungsten is a smooth material and then when you when you have this highly den dense uh, tungsten filling uh, you have very uh, less amount of uh, um, silicon dioxide here compared to oxide here right so your tungsten will be removed much faster right and also your oxide will be removed much faster compared to the oxide and tungsten region here the reason for that is your fill factor of tungsten is more compared to an isolated region here so when you are doing that you will move the the flat profile uh, lower compared to an isolated feature here right so this is called erosion and this erosion uh, can happen uh, when you have uh, material densities which are uh, different uh, and uh, one is uh, removing at a much faster rate compared to the other uh, which is also related to the density okay so dishing and erosion are two different uh, you know issues uh, challenges you face and that results in um, local and global flatness issue right if you look at dishing dishing creates local uh, topography variation while erosion uh, creates global uh, uh, thickness or flatness uh, variation and the final issue here is about post cmp clean right which is a, a, a very crucial step the reason for that is we use abrasive particles right and these abrasive particles uh, need to be removed after uh, doing cmp and if these particles are going to uh, be adsorbed onto the surface uh, then you will have difficulty in post processing right after, after cmp so we need to remove all these particles right um, though you might have a uh, flat and uh, smooth surface but then if the particles are going to sit there this will create particle contamination for subsequent processes right so here uh, the regular practice uh, is to use uh, uh, brush type uh, cleaners so you have a, a cylindrical brush right and this uh, brush is uh, rotating and the wafer is also rotating uh, in the opposite direction and this brush with smooth uh, uh, bristles here are going to uh, uh, remove or physically remove any particles that is sitting on the surface right and this might look you know very uh, physical process but if when you uh, have particles adsorbed onto the surface uh, you need uh, energy you need force to uh, take these particles out so this is the best way to do it and uh, the other way to do the this is by using ultrasonic uh, cleaning uh, which will also uh, shake these particles of wafer but the force required to remove this particle could be much higher than you know what the ultrasonic uh, uh, baths could uh, uh, give so one need to apply this brush uh, uh, cleaning in order to fully remove all the particles of the surface so once it is removed then you have a very clean surface so with this uh, we have come to a, an end uh, of this uh, chemical mechanical polishing lecture um, where we saw uh, the, the fundamental nature of the 
polishing process and what are all the uh, essential components required uh, to do polishing and also uh, the density right how the process is going to affect uh, uh, the density difference right uh, and uh, associated issues and also we saw um, how uh, we can maintain the quality of CMP process by adjusting uh, the nature of the pad and also the slurry and so on. And finally, uh, CMP is, is a dirty process, right, because you, we are using large particles. We want to avoid any kind of particle contamination during our process, but here we take help from the particles, right, uh, abrasive particles to remove the material. But after CMP, we want to remove all those particles of our uh, wafer, which is a very uh, crucial step. It's not just polishing, but also cleaning. Post CMP clean is, uh, is equally important, and uh, one need to take care of this uh, cleaning process as well. Uh, so hope you ho you you got a clear picture about uh, the CMP requirement and what why we need CMP and how we do it to achieve flat uh, surfaces for subsequent processes.